On this opportunity to accumulate health, I'm going to be discussing five barriers to starting a real food routine and how you might overcome them. So the first one is procrastination or you know, waiting for the things in life to line up just right so that 100% focus can be placed on eating the right food, the right food. Of course, there is no best time other than right now to start consuming real food and putting out the ultra processed food. There is always another vacation, another office event, another birthday, another holiday, another retreat, another wedding, another stressful event that just happened to show up. And I mean, maybe that book club, there'll be another book club to get together. They're just not a good time. This procrastinating or, or waiting for just the right time, it's not just impacting our, us physically, it's, a, it's impacting us emotionally. Studies show that depression, anxiety, loneliness, and decreased life, life satisfaction as a whole are directly correlated to procrastination. Wild. Not only that, but physical symptoms of uh, increased pain in the body, like our sensation of pain, and even increased cardiovascular disease go up as the behavior of procrastination rises. The more, more we procrastinate, the more we end up with disease and dysfunction. There are many who say, just do it. You know, that recommend, recommendation is put out there over and over and over again, just do it. However, you know, overcoming a, a behavior routine of our life, it's tough. That is why getting in a community of accountability is such a big deal. Surrounding yourself with people who are doing it, who are acting, who are not saying, manana, manana. Focus on gathering the community. Rather than doing the real food routine first, gather the community. This, you know, this is actually why we're doing the Shake the Sugar Challenge, to create a community that will then create its own momentum, making it so much easier for each of us to carry out the real food routine individually. Together, man, things happen. You have so much more energy around you and beside you that ends up showing up in you. All right, so the second barrier is the fear of failure. I've tried dieting before, I've tried changing my food before, it didn't work, or better yet, I didn't work. I don't want to you know, put energy towards another food routine because what if I fail again? What if I give into the temptation? If there's any battle I have faced in my life, it is definitely this one. The fear of failure, the fear of messing up, the fear of not being good enough and, and, and not meeting expectations. And that can be crippling. You know, it can put, completely stall out life by the fear of failing. You know, it is a sure sign uh, of living in the past. We're not living in the moment. We're not, we're not considering the future. We have a fixed mindset. We believe that we are defined by our success or failure. Related to, in this case, our ability to manage food inputs. You know, consciously we'll say, no, that's not me, that's not me. But our actions demonstrate emphatically that yes, that is in fact me. And we change this by viewing challenges as opportunities. Not who we are, not, not our identity. You know, I would write down on a piece of paper going into your food routine. This is me writing this. Matt, remember, setbacks are not failures. They are part of the process. That's what they are. If you show up again, you are not a failure. You are not failing because you showed up again. And once again, having encouraging voices who are or who have fought similar food battles is essential to give you the power to overcome and stay the course rather than just trying to do it on your own. Because we already know it's really challenging on your own. It's, it's already challenging with a group, but with a group, you're much more likely to succeed. All right, the third bearer. We do not clearly understand the value or the capacity of food to transform our life. 
even though we have all the food nostalgia, emotional draws, and physical highs and lows related to our inputs, we still think that our food choices, you know, three, 10 times per day, have no lasting impact on our physical or our mental health. Isn't that just completely wild? It, it literally baffles me daily how a person will make a food adjustment, have their headaches go away, their stomach pains go away, their, their joint pain go away, and then go back to old habits, old routines related to food, and you know, come back six months later and say, man, nothing helps. I need this medication, I need that medication to you know, just take care of it. We so easily get carried away by all the marketing, all the convenience eating that we fail to recognize, wow, look what food was doing for me or not doing for me now. That, that food is information for life, for dysfunction, depending on what you're putting in. And I understand there can also just be sort of ignorance um, that is still present for many in, in the food arena, given that there is just this endless stream of pseudo food, you know, information propaganda to, uh, that, that is promoting, you know, these specific agendas that literally care only about profit and have no concern for the end result that's gonna happen to these people who are regularly consuming their product. You know, and I agree, this is definitely a crime against humanity. This is why, you know, I'm making this and, you know, videos and podcasts and doing challenges. And, and I ask you to share them because I'm still shocked at what intelligent people are literally putting in their grocery carts, paying their hard earned money for to then take home and put in their body. It's just completely mind boggling. All right. The fourth barrier is it's my genes. My family had diabetes, dementia, arthritis. They're, you know, I got all these family members who are obese. It's just my genes. That's, that's, that, that's my barrier. You know, when I hit 40, when I hit 50, I'm going to be on high blood pressure medications. It's just how it is. This is how my family rolls. You know, my mom was, my aunt was. There's just really nothing I can do about it. So why put the effort in? And hence, why would I, you know, put energy towards real food consumption or take the time to prepare real food when that convenient, tasty food is readily available and it doesn't matter either way. Might as well taste good. Might as well be easy. Hear me. You have a set of genes from your parents that you cannot change. But, this is a massive but here, what you can manipulate is how those genes express themselves in you. How your genes express themselves is in fact your life. That is who you are. This is your life experience. The food we consume directly switches on or switches off genes that either propel life towards vitality and vigor or towards depression and dysfunction and your, your family tree of disease. So you can buy the food you put in your body, you can decide how your genes are gonna express themselves. You know, when you dive into a whole foods routine, you're literally unlocking gene expression never before seen in your family tree. And if you're, you know, procreating, if you wanna have, you know, children, you are enabling them, that next generation, to come into life, to experience life with way more health, way more vitality, way more vigor. You know, they're, they're gonna have uh, an even greater level of margin than you're even creating for yourself. And, and there's gonna be this even greater chasm between themselves, your children that is, and disease processes. So you're not even helping yourself out, you're helping them out. And this is another reason, you know, to get in a community of people making this food transition who, or who have made this real food transition, or this, this new way of life, so that you can be around those who testify to the difference in their life experience because of the foods they've been putting in. All right, number five, pain. The discomfort and, and you know, the, the inconvenience of doing things differently than friends and family than coworkers, you know, causing you to just stick out, you know, potentially you know, getting made fun of a little bit or joked about. This pain is greater in your mind than the experience, the life experience of accumulating health meal after meal. 
You know, the pain is greater than the disciplines of preparing food ahead of time, considering obstacles that may arise, you know, saying no thank you to the donuts when they come through the office, deciding not to go through the fast food drive through on the way home from the game, passing on the alcoholic beverage, asking for you know, a glass of sparkling water instead, saying no thank you to the bread bowl at the you know, French restaurant or uh, saying no thank you to the, the French fries with the burger. You know, in college, I put a sign in my dorm room that said, Matt, you can either choose the pain of discipline or the pain of regret. You may have heard that quote. I forget who said it at some point. But only you have to live in your body. Only you. You get to or you have to. Only you have to experience your body. Nobody else has to endure the joint pain, the knee replacement, the digestive discomfort, the lightheadedness, the migraines, you know, dementia, the, the feeling of uh, you know, being constrained in an airplane, you know, the seat being too small, the anxiety, the depression. Only you have to experience that. The world just keeps going along. Except that being different is, is the better way. And I would go search out, find a community of people who want to experience the best for their body and mind. And, you know, get in line with them. Sure, you may not be the fittest in the room. You may not have all together. You may have all kinds of questions. Awesome. The best place to be is in a position of learning, in the position of growth, and being around people who can enable you to grow. All right. Please like, please share this if it's been helpful to you. Hopefully it's super helpful. Man, let's accumulate health. If you haven't already signed up for um, May 1st, the advanced shake the sugar challenge it is going to be epic lives are going to be transformed changed forever not only in in physical beings but in our body and our routine and i can't wait to see you guys and gals on there i'll talk to you later